I always like to just start with something interesting. And my friend Nicole was over the house the other day. And for some reason, she started telling me all about her new obsession on Instagram, Louis the raccoon. And I'm like, Nicole, it's a raccoon. She's like, no, no, no. This is really great. It's where a woman takes videos of her pet raccoon doing things like what raccoons do. They sit around the house and he's got this big belly. He's cleaning his paws and generally Aww. just being a raccoon. And, you know, I looked at the videos. It's cute. But I didn't quite see the appeal of sitting there and wasting my time looking at raccoon videos. So <laughs> Nicole started telling me she went down this whole rabbit hole and she found out, like, what it took to have a raccoon pet in the state of Arizona, <laughs> whether or not you needed rabies shots. And then I reminded her that she has two small children under the age of six, <laughs> and having a pet raccoon is probably a really bad idea. But seriously, Louis the raccoon, I looked up, has 80,000 followers. Louis paints, and he's sporting a Dior hat in one of the stories on Instagram. <laughs> raccoon. I'm like, I know, it's such a raccoon. <laughs> you know, I had a raccoon problem in my crawl space, and nothing worked to get rid of it. So my neighbor, so good, came over, and she said, listen, what you want to do is put Lutefisk down there, and that rotting odor is going to, like, make the raccoons go away. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I put it down there, and guess what happened? A week later, a Norwegian family moved in. I was just crazy. <laughs> Just totally nuts. And you see, on that happy note, welcome once again to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital with Kim Commando. Today, as a podcast, you get it every single Friday. And just a quick reminder to rate and review and follow and subscribe our podcast because <laughs> you love it. You just love it. I know you do. Okay, well, even if you don't, just leave a nice five-star review. And joining us, as always, we have our magnificent millennial, and our internet scout, and our very own TikTok star, Matthew Heffel. And Matthew, how are you going to just astound us with your intellect and know-how this week? Well, this week, Meta is trying to, how do we say this, change time, um, as well as some cool video camera tricks that you can use at home. Oh, nice. We yeah. like that. Now, I have to tell you something else, aside from Louis the Raccoon, is that I just, I really love to travel. I haven't gone to Europe well, just a few months before the pandemic hit, I was in Barcelona. So in just a few days, super excited. I'm leaving for Nice, and we're going to be driving all around Provence in the south of France. And then we're going to head over to Italy. Then we're going to Sicily, where I'm going to be taking the Godfather tour from the cool. movie. And we're actually <laughs> going to go to the place where, like, you know, Michael's girlfriend blows up. You know, we're going to see all those good stuff. <laughs> Uh, and then on to Paris for a few days. And then during my vacay, I decided, well, you know, we could just play revisits or best ofs of these podcasts. But instead of doing that, I mean, our audience deserves more, don't they? I mean, yes. they want more than Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So I found a lovely and talented, super smart woman. She's going to do really well as a host. I just, I just know it. Um, you know, I tagged and I DM'd a whole bunch of people and, you know, I, I reached out to J Lo, but she's in Paris and she's oh, on her honeymoon, oh, and man. she she didn't respond. To, I, I, I'm, I'm, she just she didn't respond to me, but she was busy, I'm sure, on her honeymoon. Um, Ellen is taking a break from all things media, so she probably didn't even see my message. All right, because I thought she would actually be she'd be a good host. Then I reached out to Queen Elizabeth, but it turns <laughs> out. That she's on vacation in Scotland. What? Which oh, she, I know she probably didn't have time to read my email. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then I said, Allie, do you want to do it? She said, sure, I'll do it. So Allie Selgman is here and she's going to be <laughs> taking over the podcast. I'm going to be hanging out for the duration of the podcast. But Allie's going to be doing Tech Refresh and be hosting it while I'm on vacation. And so Allie... I'm going to turn it over to you. Here's the baton. Now, you are the host of Tech Refresh. Yeah, we need a sound effect. Yeah. A baton sound effect, maybe? Da, yeah. da, da, bum, bum. Da. Well, as long as it's not bum, 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 bum. Yeah. <laughs> that would be well, bad. Thank you for the trust, Kim. We are going to have a lot of fun today and the next few weeks, even while you're gone. Hopefully, you'll be listening while you're, you know. Of course, I will around, be listening. All around Europe. Okay. As always, we are going to start with the news important developments in the tech world that you need to know. And Kim, we're starting with you. So the FTC, oh. fake reviews. Tell us more. Well, yes. Well, let's first talk about Amazon reviews, okay? And all the great reviews that they have out there. And probably one of the best reviews is on a shirt, the Three Wolf 
Man t-shirt. Have you guys seen this? It's been around for a long time. It's a t-shirt. just has three wolves on it. Uh, it has uh, the sales increased oh, because of all the reviews. They have like over 38,000 reviews on this t-shirt. And sales have increased over, they say, 2,300% because of all the reviews. Okay. Now, I normally don't like to read things, especially on a podcast or on a radio show. But this is one of the reviews that uh, 37,459 people found helpful about this T-shirt. Now, <laughs> it's a black T-shirt, and it has three wolves on it. That's all it is. And, and you know, you, if, you're, if you're listening, you should Google this T-shirt and just look and see what it is. It's the Three Wolf Man Short Sleeve T-shirt. Now, uh, this guy from New Jersey, B. Govern, is his name. He, he writes this review. I'm just going to read parts of it because it's so funny. This item has wolves on it, which makes it intrinsically sweet and worth five stars. But I tried it on and magic happened. After checking to make sure the shirt would properly cover my girth, I walked from my trailer to Walmart with the shirt on. And it was immediately approached by women. And the women knew that the wolves on my shirt, that I, too, was a wolf, a mysterious <laughs> loner who knows how to howl at the moon. I, arro- wow. I arrived at Walmart mounted in my courtesy scooter, walking such a drag, sitting side saddle so that my wolves would sh- proudly show <laughs> off my shirt. And as I was browsing tube socks, I could hear the as- asthmatic breathing behind me. I turned around to see a slightly sweaty dream in sweatpants and flip-flops standing there. <laughs> she told me that she liked the wolves on my shirt. And I told her, oh, I just want to howl at the moon. She offered me a swig from her Mountain Dew, and I drove my scooter with her shuffling alongside out the door and into the rest of my lives. Thank you wow. for the wolf shirt. Obviously, that's a fake review. And when you're looking online for a hotel, a restaurant, a job, a vet, dentist, car repairs, any other company or service, I mean, here's why you never really can trust all the different online reviews. Because sometimes they're just useless and they're easily faked, like this guy with, you know, saying about he put on a T-shirt and he's in Walmart on a scooter and he found the woman of his dreams, okay? (laughs) So now the Federal Trade Commission is ready to punish any business that allows these fake reviews with fines of more than $40,000 every single day for fake reviews. Can you imagine Amazon? Um, So what are some giveaways of fake reviews? Okay. Uh, what is when you see a group of what raving reviews all of a sudden on the same day? Oh, this is great! I love this. Or just like one review where it just says one word: great product. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, okay, that was Perfect. really good. So what you want to do is actually reach out to people who you know, especially if it's a service. Like, who do you recommend to fix my AC or my plumbing or whatever it is? You know. And after reading that review, I was thinking it's about seriously getting that three wolf shirt. I mean, because I, maybe I should wear it like when I'm in Europe. There I mean, they go. wouldn't know I was an American or anything like that. <laughs> because it would help me to know that I'm like, maybe I would be like more aware of who's around me because with this shirt on, because then I could be a werewolf. <laughs> oh, Kim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. When All you right. two look at reviews online, do you look at the good ones first or the bad ones first? Bad ones. Me too. Bad ones. Yeah. yeah I always go on Amazon, go to the one star, see what people are saying. I always exactly. like the ones where it's like, clearly not an issue with the, the product. It was you. Yeah. Yeah. So we weed those ones out. Yes. And we read them, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, Matt. What's a leap second and why is Meta trying to change our concept of time? Right. So <laughs> recently, we've seen a lot of internet going down issues with AWS or hackers taking down systems. So we're seeing big swaths of the internet go down from time to time. And this has been happening more and more. But one thing you might not know is that sometimes this happens because scientists actually change time. So if you Ooh. don't know about this, there's something called a leap second. And it's kind of like a leap year, but a little bit different. So this put on our science hats, our astronomy hats, the sun goes around the, or the earth goes around the sun, and that's how we can tell how long a year is. Well, sometimes that can change due to gravity or other things going on in space. And basically what this means is that scientists have to detect it and say, hey, it moves slower or faster during this time. We need to add or move a second to the master universal clock that all computers use. And when they do this, it has created in the past lots of problems for tech companies. So back in 2012, they did this, and Twitter and HubSpot and a bunch of other servers went down because the time was changed. And so Meta this past week came out and said, we don't want this to happen anymore. And they're trying to lobby different countries to ban this practice, to get rid of the practice of 
uh, adding these leap seconds every few years or every four, five, six years. And so the internet is kind of divided. I was just reading the comments on a few of the articles talking about this. Some people are saying this is a good idea. It will stop the internet from going down, stop services from going down, help tech companies keep things more uh, in line. The other group is saying, why should we allow Facebook meta to yes. control our time? That seems like we're letting them have a little bit too much power there. They already control a lot. So let's <laughs> yeah. not let them control our time. So what do, what totally do you guys agree think? Totally agree with that. Yeah. Totally agree. I mean, you know what? There, there's something like, I'm thinking like like the Greenwich time standard. Like there should be like a real, like a time standard, like establishment. I don't know if you've never been there, but in England, you actually can see like where time starts. Mm -hmm. Greenwich. Yeah. Okay. I think they should be in charge of it. Not <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. Right. Those are the people that control the time and they deal with the scientists, the astronomers to actually figure out when we add and remove. So it is that Greenwich mean time that is changed, which affects the computers. I guess exactly. once you have so much money, you think like, you know what? I don't like how time works. It's two o'clock. I want it to be it. three o'clock. Maybe three o'clock. How much would that cost? <laughs> exactly. And think of all the data I could collect with an extra second yeah. per day. Oh It'd my be gosh. amazing. I bet they're thrilled for leap year every year, right? Oh yeah. yeah another exactly. whole day to, to right. get another little bit. All right, my turn. Another day. Another data breach. Uh, this time it is Twitter. I'm sure you've seen it. Email addresses and phone numbers from 5.4 million accounts are now for sale on the dark web for $30,000, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, you're probably wondering, is my info part of it? Maybe. The hacker says the database includes info on celebrities, companies, randoms, OGs, etc. So who really knows, right? Wow. Um, lots of private email addresses and phone numbers are floating around now, though. And the biggest pain after d data leaks like this is really what happens after all the scammers, right? Um, scammers yes. come out, they want to take advantage. So yeah. maybe you'll get an email that says, hey, pay me some money or I'm going to expose your DMs. You're part of this Twitter hack. Well, you're too smart to fall for that because you know it was just email addresses and phone numbers. It's not passwords. Okay, we can ignore that. What if it's your info was leaked, you're entitled to some money, click here. More convincing, maybe. Uh, we're all a little greedy when we see those, but no, that would take years for yeah. that to happen. So be on the lookout for those scams. Um, even if your data wasn't exposed in this leak, it has been exposed in some other leak in the past few years, right? Yeah. We, I'm sure, yeah. We all yes, get those. Exactly. Uh, a number that blew me away, Forbes Advisor, they looked the last five years of complaints to the FBI's Internet Crime Division. Americans lost over $20 billion thanks to data breaches. Whoa. $20 billion. Billion with a B? A lot. With a B. Uh, there's not much you can do. You know, once you give your information to a company, there's not really much you can do about it being scraped from a database or leaked in some other way. Your best defense, really, only keep accounts that you're actually using. So this is your friendly reminder. The more accounts you have, the more vulnerable you are to, you know, it getting out in the wrong hands. So go through, delete any apps, any online accounts, subscriptions, anything you have that you don't use anymore. All right, and one more thing that I wanted to add on, a little warning if you use Spotify. Um, there's a problem right now on Spotify. I like how the New York Post uh, talked about this. They called it a smut problem. People are <laughs> <laughs> uploading okay. very adult images and playlist names uh, to Spotify. Apparently, this is a huge problem. No, it's not allowed. Spotify says, you can't do this and yet people are stumbling upon it. So if you have any little ones, especially in the house, be really careful with those public playlists right now, and you should probably avoid them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was just so surprised how much money Spotify is losing. I mean, you, you'd think like with them owning the podcast, maybe they're just paying people too much money. But, and they also get, it was about a year ago, I don't know if you remember, that they came out with that product that was like Spotify for your car. Yeah. So oh, that's yeah, yeah. you have better Okay, that's not working for them. They're getting rid of that. <laughs> so it's like it's one of those products, like tech products, like, oh, I think it's going to be great, like the spectacles for Snapchat. <laughs> they, they didn't work either. Yeah, but, we all yeah. just use our phones. We don't care about right. your... I think it's called exactly. the car thing. It's got like a really silly name like that. The yes, car it thing. does. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, a reminder, this is not the Kim Commando Show podcast. So you can find that over at getkim.com or you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you want to listen to Kim's entire three-hour show every week few bucks a month and you can listen on your schedule coming up we have the tech tricks some new ideas that you can use with google maps and matt has some tricks for your security camera how'd you like to hear about how i saved 456 dollars in just five minutes i used an app called rocket money 
Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. Before we get to the tech tips, I want to share something really helpful with you, and it's free. Uh, if you have a Windows PC or a Mac, right, you have one or the other, go over to commando.com slash free guides. And what do you think we have there for you? A free guide. It's got tips, tricks, mm -hmm. good downloads uh, for your computer. You're going to learn some stuff. So again, go over to commando.com slash free guide, and it is our thanks to you for listening. All right, now it is time for some insider secrets and tips to make you a little smarter, use your tech a little better, impress your friends and family. We are going to start with Kim and Google Maps. I know. Google Maps is just, you know, I love Google Maps. I'm like kind of a map geek. I know. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's a, But I'm sitting there and, and I'm like putting in like where we're going all through like Google Maps. And then... Finally, they have this photorealistic aerial view. This is really amazing stuff. About 100 different landmarks. Um, it's in London, New York, Barcelona, San Francisco, Tokyo. So, like, for example, just for giggles, you got nothing to do. It's much better than sitting and watching Louis the Raccoon on TikTok or on Instagram. <laughs> is that just type in Eiffel Tower in Google Maps. And then if you look down, there's photos. Oh, but the first one is different. It's the Eiffel Tower, but you're like zooming all around it. It's like so fun. Okay, next new thing that they have, because they have three new things. Second one is cycling routes. I know. You're like, oh, Kim, I knew that Google Maps can give me a bike route. Yes, it's been there for 12 years. Of course you know that. But what you don't know is that now you can see steep hills, uh, whether or not oh. you're going to be biking over stairs. Helpful tip. Yeah. Okay. Quite. Cool. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, or if you're going to be in car traffic, if you're going to be biking down unknown streets, um, biking on something like a major road versus a local street. So if you're on a bike and you're getting a Google Map, you're going to have a lot more details about that. And then the third thing that they have is now location sharing notifications. Now, of course, you could always share your location, which is always super handy. But now if someone's sharing their location with you, you can set up notifications so that you know when they arrive at a certain address. Oh, nice. that's helpful. Uh, yeah. Isn't that great? So all this is going rolling out into Google Maps on iOS, Android, and also desktop. Um, and speaking of Google Maps, you know, Boris Johnson was out before they canned him, saying that Vladimir Putin is redrawing the map of Europe in blood. Yes. But I bet you it's really hard to get refills for that printer. That would be really <laughs> a tough one. <laughs> tough one. Uh, While well, we're talking about maps... I'm almost embarrassed to share this, but whatever, I can just throw it out there. I had a little duh moment last week where I realized, oh, Waze is owned by Google. That happened in 2013. Somehow it just, you know, completely went over my head. Um, but I thought about it because, Kim, we had a really cool tip on the show. You can set your own voice in Waze to do directions. And we have a link over on commando.com. You can have Kim Commando. Yes. Give yeah. you directions. In your, <laughs> in your car all the time. And, you know, and, and of course, I mean, I started this out as a, like, you know, because I'm kind of a prankster with Barry. Yeah. And so uh, so I set up. So when he t fired up Waze, it was my voice. And he's like, whoa, how did that happen? OK, <laughs> so here's OK. So here's the latest prank. OK, so, you know, I bought a Tesla Plaid and I'm still sitting on the fence whether or not I'm going to keep it. I'm probably going to sell it in September. So if you want a Tesla Plaid, just keep in mind. I want you to make sure you look up the price first because this is the <laughs> highest end Tesla that they have. Because people are saying, oh, I'll buy the Plaid. I'll give you 30 grand for it. Like, mm, I don't think so. OK, <laughs> so if you want the Tesla Plaid and I will sign it, by the way, people are saying, would you actually sign the dash like Carol Shelby does? And I said, sure. So Barry gets in the car. OK, before he does is that I um, he sits down and we're like driving along. And then if you hit the button on the left hand side. It makes the makes that seat fart, <laughs> and so and so the seat farted, and he's like, 
It wasn't me. I'm like, you know, kind of an older guy. Maybe it just slipped out, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, like, we go down a little bit more. And it's like, and it's different fart sounds. Oh, man. Okay. All right. So then I, I tell him, I start laughing, and he starts laughing. And then we have some friends of ours who get in the back seat. So you, you can pick the seat that farts. You can? Oh, man. Yes. I didn't yes. know that. Oh my god. So it's not just the fart sound outside the car, you can actually pick the seat. And so I picked I picked the woman, Mary, of course. Of and course. Mary's like, like, I didn't do that. It's so funny. Anyway. That's I don't amazing. know how I got onto that. I'm on a tangent, <laughs> but I'm back. Okay. Allie, you got it back. High tech whoopee cushion. That's yeah. beautiful. Yes. All right. Well, that's one of the perks, right? If you want to buy Kim's plaid, you can embarrass yes, anyone in your car. Worth it. Love it. All right, Nat. Video camera tricks. What do we got? Right. Recently, Amazon Prime Day happened, and I bought a, well, my friend bought for me a Facebook portal. I wasn't really looking for one, but it's really helpful in specific situations. So I play a lot of board games with my friends. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You bought a Facebook portal? I, I got one gifted Zuckerberg to me. looking right in that house. I know. I, okay, but, you know, they discontinued that. Well, they were selling them on Amazon Prime Day just a few weeks ago for really cheap on Amazon. That's why, yeah. Matt. They yes, they got rid of the product, but that's okay. That's You'll good. get a few I'm years of support. One. Yeah. Yes. So it's really helpful because you can have it track things around the room. So you can have it track people or faces, and you can choose what it's going to track. And so what we used it for was we're playing board games, and one of our friends, who's actually the person who bought uh, the uh, Facebook portal for me, lives across the country, and she wanted to play a board game with us. And so what you can do is you can angle the camera down towards the table, and you can have it track pieces, you can have it track hands, you can have it track whatever you want it to track around the table, which allows you to play these games with friends all over the world. That's fun. And I was thinking about that, and I was like, what else can cameras do? A lot of times people just think of these things as, you know, oh, I'm going to FaceTime my mom or whatever you're going to do. But there's some really cool things, and I was looking up like one of the most popular ones, which is the Ring Video Doorbell. And there's some interesting ways people use these things that you wouldn't necessarily think of. So I'm going to give you three that I, I thought were just fascinating. The first one is people use it as a messaging service. So you know that the Ring is constantly recording, and it detects when someone is moving up to it. What you can do is if you're out of town and your neighbors want to leave you a message, instead of texting you or calling you <laughs> and leaving you a voicemail, they can just walk up to your front door, say what they want to say to you into the ring, and then walk away, and you can check your messages on your ring doorbell whenever you need. It'll just say motion activated, and you can get messages that and, way. And, you know, and think of that. I mean, you could have, like, you could, like, walk up to your neighbor, and you know that they're traveling, and you say, yep. you know what? Damn it. Would you just have somebody mow the lawn already? <laughs> hey, okay. your sprinkler went off too early this morning or whatever you need to tell yes, them, but exactly. it's helpful. Your pool pump is making so much noise. Yeah. Yes. The other way that I thought was fascinating is people will use it to um, put it inside and they use it to track their animals when they're on vacation or when they're out of town for a couple days oh. or when they're at the grocery store for a couple hours. You can take the video doorbell and you can set it up inside and you can actually use the voice feature to um, talk to your animals or to <laughs> any of that kind of stuff. Make them feel like they're, they're not there by themselves. So that's super helpful. Can't you just picture the dog who's like, Ooh, yeah. How'd I mean, you get in here? Exactly. <laughs> super. But, you know, it's helpful. It gives your dogs the idea that maybe someone, someone's there. You know, yeah. some people leave the TV on so they feel like there's somebody around. So this way it's, it's your voice. So that's kind of nice. Nice. And then the final way I thought was really cute is if you live in the neighborhood where your family lives with you, you can, they're calling this um, where ring time like FaceTime and you can <laughs> ring time with your family who lives near you and they can go up to your video doorbell and you can log in and you can have a conversation with them and talk to your oh. grandkids or your kids or what have you so people are using them that way as well cute oh that's super cute yeah. yes it is. absolutely all right those are wonderful my tip is more security related um I've been a little bit of a, a bummer lately with, I've got all the, yeah. the malware, but you know what? This is a really useful tip and I think everybody should do this. Okay, when you obviously unknowingly download malware on your computer, we're talking about a PC, what kind of file type is it most commonly? Do you two know? Mm -mm. Is it a zip file? No, good guess. EXE? It might be. PDF? There you go, mm. Kim, yes. It's an executable file, a .exe. And these files aren't always bad, of course. It's like a pretty common file type. But what you want to really watch out for is you think you're downloading one thing, like it should be a PDF, but it's really a .exe file. Yes. That's when it's bad. So, you know, I'm downloading some concert tickets, concert tickets .pdf, but really the file is concert tickets .pdf .exe. Ooh, That's yeah. a really common trick. So a little change that you can make to protect yourself and spot these things, you can set the file names on your PC to include the file type. 
So instead of just seeing tech refresh logo on my desktop, now I see tech refresh logo dot PNG or dot JPEG. Um, it's really easy to do. You open a folder and then in the top, there's a button that says view. And then you'll see a little checkbox that says show file extension. Um, it changes how files are displayed everywhere on your desktop, in your folders, everything. Hmm. Again, an exe is a Windows file. So if you have a Mac, you're not going to see this. But it still holds true that if you're expecting a file to be one thing and it's something else, that's a problem. So the way to check it on a Mac, you just right click on the file and then uh, select get info. And again, if it's supposed to be a Word document and it's something else, don't open it. Hmm. All right, if you like these quick little tips, there's another podcast that you should subscribe to. It's Kim's Daily Tech Update. We've got two one-minute podcasts per day. One is the most important tech news of the day, and the other is a handy little trick like the ones we share here. To find that, of course, go to your favorite podcast player and search Commando with a K. You can also find them on our website, commando.com. Coming up, I am putting on my crypto princess crown. Uh, I've got a wild story about some lost Bitcoin. And Matt, you are going to get us all up to date on what the internet is buzzing about. I shall. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim, rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. Before we get to the crypto news, I have a little request. If you are listening and you like this podcast, you like us, you think we're the best, leave us a nice review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts are the big places to do it. So share something nice. Not only does it help other people see, wow, this is a great podcast, um, but it really brightens our days too. I actually have one to share. I don't know if you two have read this, but I read it today and was so happy. This is from somebody named Dewar79. Hmm. All right. I've been following Kim since 2001 and have learned so much from her through the years. That's nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm always sharing things I learned from her show with my friends and family. These days, I particularly appreciate the tips, tricks, and warnings to keep us safe in a tech-driven world. I'm even able to tell my two adult children who feel they know most everything since they grew up with technology, and it's something they didn't know. That's awesome. Uh, this show in particular is my favorite with all the tension and bad news coming at us. This show is a breath of fresh air. The camaraderie between the co-hosts is a nice thing to listen in on. I find myself smiling practically through the entire show. Oh, Isn't that so, so nice? nice. Oh, so nice. So be you know like what? this I nice person. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think that's my sister, but that's... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen and share something nice. Uh, it really means a lot to us. Okay, time to put on my crypto princess crown. And we're going to talk about a, a guy named Jack Howells. Okay, Jack is from Southern Wales. And years ago, he had a couple hard drives that were about the size of an iPhone 6. We remember those mm -hmm. were nice and small, actually fit in your hand, not like your phone today. One was empty. The other one contained 8,000 Bitcoin that he mined himself. Uh, Jack meant to throw away the empty hard drive. You can see where this is going. Jack threw away the one that had all the Bitcoin on it. Yes. Oh. Uh... It is worth, at my last check, $169 million. <sighs> oh, he, you know what? He's been trying to get this out of there for a long time. Hasn't about nine he? years. I mean, yes. So yeah. it's been nine years. Uh, okay. You know it's in the trash. Why hasn't this guy gone like digging through the dump? Two things. Well, first, there are thousands of tons of garbage to dig through. And the other problem is the city. They won't let him. They say that digging up all the trash because it's buried is too much of an ecological risk. And so for years and years, he's been petitioning the city, can I please go find this thing? And they keep saying, no, no, you can't. 
He's even offered him like a piece of the action, too. He yeah. sure Listen, has. I'll yeah. give you like 50 percent. Just let <laughs> me go get my hard drive. Yeah. Yep. And nothing works. But he's got a new plan that he's ready to present to the council. Get this. The plan would cost $11 million to carry out and it would take three years to search 110,000 tons of trash. Ew. Um, where is he going to get this money? It's actually two venture capitalists who are willing to take the risk and they are going to spot him all this money because, of course, they would get a payout mm-hmm. if they actually find the hard drive, right? It's quite a team they've assembled. They actually have somebody who was part of the company that got the data off of the black box from the Columbia Space Shuttle. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so, if somebody, so if somebody can do this, it's, it's yeah. this guy. It's them, yeah. So this yeah. isn't just, you know, send some people out to dig through. It would be a combination of people getting the garbage out and then um, AI that would actually try to spot anything that looked like one of these hard drives. Then it would go back to human pickers to see, okay, is this right? Um, yes, it seems like the kind of thing that somebody would want to slip in their pocket because... It's worth $170 sure. million. Dollars. So the plan also budgets for 24-hour surveillance and a few of those spot dogs from Boston Dynamics oh, yeah. roaming around to make sure that everybody, you know, stays honest. Wow. Now, the bummer for Jack, uh, a council representative talked to Business Insider recently and said, this is a quote, there is nothing that Mr. Howells could present to us that would make us agree. So even oh. with his $11 million plan, we'll see. Um, he's going to have another chance to talk to them soon. He did add in, hey, if you let me do this, I'm going to either build a solar farm or a wind farm on top of this landfill. I'll leave it nicer than, you know, than when mm. I got there. So we'll see. Man, can you imagine? Now, so, so the question is, though, and I mean, I know we have the black box, in, but we all know that hard drives, they are prone to failure, mm. right? They and so are. He, could, he, he could go through this whole thing. And because of the temperature and think of the, the fumes yeah. and the bacteria and everything else that might be growing in there and the hard drive, it's it's been rained on. It's been could have been cracked. On. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And there was just, actually and, an analysis of this. And so if it's not cracked, we're, we're assuming that it could be cracked. And then, yeah, he's just screwed. If it's not cracked, there's an 80 to 90 percent chance that they can get the data off of oh. it. They've analyzed oh, everything wow. that could have happened, and there's a really good chance that they will be able to. So, Well, <sighs> Jack, if you're listening, I just want to let you know that all of us here at Tech Refresh, we are standing right behind you. <laughs> and for you. And we, if you want us to appear in front of the council, we're happy to do that. <laughs> We just want a little just tiny a piece of the action. Cut. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a little cut. That's just, it. Just a little bit. All right, it's time for one of my favorite parts of Tech Refresh. Matt, you help us stay, I think hip is the word, right? Cool, keep us up to date with what's going on. Yeah, hip the, is a great word. The least cool like we're thing. Like, yeah, you're like one of the cool kids. So it's yeah. like when somebody says something like, I'm like, oh yeah, I totally knew about Mr. Beast. For yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> He's my favorite YouTuber. My favorite YouTuber. It's YouTuber. Fine. <laughs> All right, what's the internet talking about? Something kind of interesting happened in the last couple of weeks. SNL, which has been around for 50 years, no is way. coming up on the 50 years. They're coming up on their 50th <laughs> anniversary. Um, is coming up on their new season, and so they're hiring all their new cast members as they lost a bunch at the end of last season. Well, there is an online comedian. Um, his name is Jake Novak, and he released a TikTok video that went incredibly viral. One of the most viral videos I've ever seen on TikTok in years. And basically what it was, was him doing an audition tape. He was singing a song, explaining why he's so funny and he should be on SNL and Lauren Michaels, pay attention to me, and blah, 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 blah. And it was, I watched it when it first came out about a month ago. It was, uh, it was cringy. It was pretty cringy. Mm. And immediately the... Okay, excuse me, Matt, Matt. For those of us, who I know what cringe is. Okay, But for <laughs> some people who don't know what cringy is, we have to have like, okay, we're going to have to just have like, explain cringy in just like four words um embarrassingly awkward oh he did it too there you go that was even better okay it's that kind of thing that makes your skin crawl it makes you like "Ah." secondhand embarrassed like oh i wish you wouldn't have put that on the internet Mm -hmm. and and to use it in a sentence tech refresh is never cringy never never the opposite of cringy okay (laughs) yes so this video got 4.4 million views in just a few weeks and that was just on uh, TikTok. It was also then shared on Twitter with another hundred and something million views wow. and Facebook and all over the place. And immediately after this, Jake Novak disappeared from the internet. He was getting negative comments and everybody was kind of attacking him, telling him that it wasn't good and he wasn't funny. 
and then he just disappeared. And so the internet is kind of either one, worried, worried that this guy is so depressed now because of all these negative comments and he's just sad and because he was a really prolific uh, creator before that. He was releasing multiple videos a week, multiple songs on all the different platforms, and then just after this song, disappeared. So half of them say that they're worried about him. The other half are conspiracy theorists, and they believe that he got picked up by SNL, and he <laughs> was forced to sign an NDA, and then he won't be able to talk on social media until the new season starts. Uh... So it's one of those two things. Either there's a really sad story about internet bullying and taking some guy down, or it's a really happy story. He ends up on SNL, so I guess we'll have to we'll have to find out what it is. I'm rooting for him. Me too. Me too. Uh, me too. Me too. So, so if there is an update to this, Matt, would you let us know? Oh, absolutely. The new season starts, I believe, in the fall, and so we'll we'll let you know uh, an update on this guy's whereabouts. Hopefully Perfect. by then. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, they don't always get it right at SNL. I found a list of comedians mm. rejected after their SNL interviews. Yeah. Uh, Steve Carell. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. They messed really? up there. Aubrey Plaza, who's on Parks and Rec and a bunch mm -hmm. of other stuff. She's hilarious. Kevin Hart. Yeah, I saw that one. That was crazy. Uh, John Goodman. Kathy Griffin. They mm. made a bad call there. And Jim Carrey. Not funny enough for oh, SNL. Oh, apparently. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was at the, you know, I was at the yacht club last night. I know that sounds so pretentious. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what it's called. Imagine you'd say that, Kim. Yeah, okay. never in, I've said, in my life would I say I was at the yacht club last <laughs> night. Um, and Bruce Johnson came over to me. Now, Bruce Johnson was one of the founding members of the Beach Boys. Oh, oh cool. And, okay, and he's a big fan of the show. Hi. And so hi, he, so he's, <laughs> yes, exactly. Hi, Bruce. And so he was telling me all about how he loves the show and all this other stuff. And then uh, he's actually said to me, and it, I mean, I, I, talk, I just mentioned this briefly once on, to you guys. But he actually, last night he said, you know, Kim, you have an amazing voice. He said, I, I goes, I've listened to you for years, and you should sing. You, have you ever <laughs> tried to sing? Have you ever tried? And, of course, Barry just busted up laughing. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then he said, can you sing something for me? And I was, like, kind of embarrassed, but I was like, good, 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 good vibrations. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, okay, forget I ever said that. <laughs> okay. Just Aww. that was bad. I know. So sometimes, you know, so maybe – they, you know, SNL got it wrong, hey. but because they did, there maybe these all these folks' careers just went to another different level because of that. There True. you go. There you go. True. If you want to come tell Kim how great her voice is, you can do that on yes, social please. media. Where can you find Kim on Twitter, Matt? Oh, man. I think it's twitter.com slash, hold on, Kim Commando. Yes, I and believe. Facebook. Oh, I was almost Kim... going to tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Facebook.com slash Kim Commando. Yes, Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. LinkedIn.com yes. slash Kim mm -hmm. Everywhere Everything. is Kim Commando. So come say hi. All right, coming up, we have trivia. And the stakes are getting higher because Kim's going to have to eat some mushrooms. Matt's going to have to eat some olives. And I think I figured out what mine is going to be. Oh, good. Oh, okay. So stick around. We'll be right back. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't. And that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. Before we get into trivia, we have a new ebook. If you are a budding entrepreneur, maybe you have a skill that you think, you know what, I can make some good money with this. We have an awesome ebook. It is called The Guide to Successful Freelancing, and it has everything you need to know to start a business and do it the right way. We're not talking, you know, staying off the books here. We're talking how to set up a real business, do it right, earn money, find clients, 
branding, everything you need to know. So go over to amazon.com. That's the easiest way to find it. Search Kim Commando and you will see it there. Guide to successful online freelancing. Okay, trivia. So we set the stakes. Kim, <clears throat> you hate mushrooms. Yeah, and let's just say they're not the magical kind. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, she's, I don't. I, no. I, and I don't do those magical ones either. But I just so <laughs> any mushroom across the board is just like not for me. Okay, and Matt, you hate olives. I do. Yeah. They are vile. Okay, and if I lose, so I said that I'm afraid of heights. Now, I think we have to be honest here with you two and your food aversions. I get it. It's fine. But I don't think me jumping out of a real plane is really <laughs> kind of in the same stakes, right? No, sure. it's not. But, it's not. I get it. Okay, so Serena, who works with us, she did something this weekend. She did indoor skydiving. Yeah. And that's where you go, and it's like a big wind tunnel, and you go in. And she said she's not afraid of heights at all. And she went into it like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. On Monday, I asked her how it went, and she said, Allie, it was so scary. <laughs> I was not expecting oh how just off kilter you would feel and how kind of out of control. So I think maybe, maybe that could be it for me. Cause when I Indoor think about doing diving? that, uh, I'm frightened for sure, but I think I can handle it. Well, I did that in Vegas. How'd it go for you? And, uh, you know, I thought it was a kick in the pants. <laughs> you know, but that's, I mean, I thought it was a lot of fun, you know, yeah. cause they do, they do give you a little training. Yeah. Okay. And you just get there, you get like in a big fan and then you like sail around, yeah, around. a little bit yeah. and then yeah, yeah, you float around and, but you got a helmet on and all the other gear and <laughs> you'll be, you'll be fine. And you know, you're really only 10 feet off the ground, Ellie. Mm. So it's not that big of a deal. <sighs> all right. I think I can do it. It'd make for some great content. Okay. If I had to, it, it would. <laughs> I bet we could get a video of like, you know, like a dog sticking their yeah. head yes, out the window. Exactly. I, me looking like yeah. that. Yeah, that'll be perfect. All right, Matt, it is your turn to see if you can stump us on trivia this week. Yeah, I'm losing. Uh, so <laughs> I really tried to get one that was a little bit more difficult. And at first I was like, oh, maybe I'll do some SNL trivia. But I was like, no, nah, that's too easy. So it's been a scorcher lately everywhere everywhere in america in europe in in asia it's been hot everywhere right and with all these heat waves going around uh people that live in places where you can have this have ac right and it makes living here in phoenix bearable <laughs> so in the the roots of ac have actually been around since china when a inventor named ding huan crafted a manually powered rotary fan and the concept of air cooling actually was brought up by Benjamin Franklin when he used oh. alcohol to try to create freezing temperatures. Hmm. But that is not the modern AC unit. So in which year was the modern AC unit invented? Oh my gosh. 1898, oh. 1910, okay. 1902, or 1918? Again, that's A, 18. Oh, that's not fair. This is not you got, fair. We need to space these out. Got, yeah, she got to space these years out a little bit more. <laughs> well, I didn't want to make it too obvious because, I'm, you know, it's in that range. You know, it's not, I gave you that. It, it's after Benjamin Franklin. So, you know. All right. I, I, I'll just, I'll, I'll go first. I, okay. I'm going to say 1918. Okay. I'm feeling 1918 because 1918. that, you know, electricity was becoming more prevalent and it was before everybody was getting drunk in the prohibition. <laughs> and I'm, and you know, and I just, and the bars were opening up. I'm feeling 1918. 1918. That's a solid, solid answer. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go. This is purely a guess. I have no information to back this up. I'm going to say 1910. 1910. Okay. Okay. So wow. 1910, 1918. 1910. And what were the other choices? Because uh, you had 1898, yep. 1910, 1902, and 1918. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So, so, so Allie and I have two of them. Well, okay, I will so... tell you now that Allie is incorrect. Oh, my first point. And I will tell you that Kim is incorrect. <gasps> So oh. the actual answer is 1902. In 1902, Willis H. Carrier installed the first air conditioning system in the Seconds Willem Lithography and Publishing Company in Brooklyn, New York. He then formed the Carrier Air Conditioning Company, if you've heard of it. It's a huge air conditioning company. Yes. And in 2020, they had 53,000 employees and the company was valued at 18.6 billion dollars. Whoa. So his company's still going strong over 120 years later. What you talking about, Willis? That 
<laughs> yeah, that is great. Know. You know, that's fabulous. You know, there there used to, we used to have a video. We should find it and put it back on the site because it was really popular about how you can make your own air conditioner oh, like yeah. from Home Depot parts. You remember that? It's like you get a bucket of water <laughs> oh, and you I've get a it. fan. Yeah. Oh, have you? And then uh, yeah. you get like a sheet. And you make your own AC? Yeah, it works okay if you have nothing else. <laughs> One thing you should not do, I saw this going around. It was on TikTok. People were saying, especially people who don't have central air, oh, yeah. you know, people in Europe or, you know, in countries where it normally doesn't get this hot. So the advice was basically take a plastic baggie, fill it with ice, and kind of arrange it on your fan, clip it to your fan, mm -hmm. do whatever, and it'll make colder air. Um, no, this is dangerous. This is a fire hazard. Don't do this. Don't clip anything to your fan. Don't put any water near the fan. Uh, you're going to have electrical problems. Yeah, that's not a good idea. No. But, yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah, yes. but we'll put up that video and teach you how to make one uh, the safe way. Yeah. Right? Okay. Exactly. I think it's the time everyone's been waiting for. The joke. And guess what? It's me this week. Ooh. Who got the joke? Are you two prepared to laugh? Yes. Yes. My funny I bones am. are ready. I am. You know, this one's a good one. I don't want to oversell it because you can never come back from that. So I'm going to say this is a solid seven. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All right. We're Seven's ready? good. All yes. right. A man walked into the produce section of his local supermarket and he asked to buy half a head of lettuce. The boy working in the department said, well, we really only sell whole heads of lettuce. But the man was insistent that the boy ask his manager if he can do this. He walked in the back room and the boy said, some idiot wants to buy half a head of lettuce. As he finished the sentence, he turned around and saw the man standing right there behind him. So he said, and this gentleman kindly offered to buy the other half. The manager approved the deal and the man went on his way. Later, the manager came over the boy and he said, I was so impressed with the way you got yourself out of that situation earlier. I really like people who think on their feet. Where are you from, son? And he said, Canada, sir. Why did you leave Canada? The manager asked. And the boy said, Sir, there's nothing but loose women and hockey players up there. Really? The manager said. My wife is from Canada. The boy replied, Whoa, who does she play for? <laughs> hockey jokes. Some of the best. That is good. <laughs> okay. All right. That was it. You know what? That was really good. I didn't know where that was going. I got it. I got it. Um, okay. I have a joke. It's only it's about traveling. Okay. okay. Because, you know, after this, I'm going to be, you know, this weekend I'm on the big bird in the sky going on the big plane and 11 hour flights. So I found I found a joke in case you're ever traveling to Jerusalem. OK, which I'd love to go to Jerusalem. Yeah. But I've never been yet. Maybe next year. So a man and his ever nagging wife went on vacation to Jerusalem and while they were there. So sadly, the wife, oh, she passed away. Uh -huh. And the undertaker told the husband, okay, I don't know how to tell you this, but you can have her shipped back to your home in the United States for $5,000, or you can bury her here, which she loved. She's a Christian in the Holy Land for just $150. I thought about it. He said, you know, I, I think I'm just going to ship her home. And then the undertaker says, you know, why would you spend $5,000 to ship your wife home to the United States? Wouldn't it be so wonderful to have her buried here? And you'd only have to spend $150. I thought about it, and he sighed, and he said, you know, I, I just have to tell you, you know, a long time ago, a man died here. He was buried here, and three days later, he rose from the dead, and I just can't take that chance. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, Kim. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. All right, we like to end with a little to-do, because we share so much good information here. We want you to keep it going throughout the week. Take something from this podcast and take it with you. Matt? What's your to-do for our lovely listeners? You know, everybody has uh, some kind of video thing in their house, whether it's a ring, whether it's a Facebook portal, probably not. But uh, <laughs> whatever you have, there's a lot more uses for it than just using it as a video doorbell. You can use it inside. You can use it with your kids. You can use it with your grandkids. Go online, check out some cool things you can do with it. I know we have a few articles over on commando.com you can check out, but there's, there's other things you can do with your video doorbells. Nice. And if you don't have a video doorbell or you don't have a camera, we have a site um, we've talked about before. Yeah. It's called Critter.camera. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, search Critter on commando.com. You can turn an old computer, an old phone, an old laptop into a little security cam. It's really cool. Yeah. All right, Kim, what about you? Uh, location sharing, notifications. You're meeting somebody at a park, an event, a concert, venue, whatever. Instead of trying to say, um, I'm going to be like five minutes from the food truck. And then the other person says, what food truck? Because there's like 12. No. So you can actually like <laughs> drop a pin exactly where you're located 
and then that other person can find you. Nice. Mine's going to be that little safety tip. If you have a Windows PC, show the file extensions. It doesn't hurt anything and it'll just keep you safer. Again, open up any folder, click view at the top, and then that little box that says show file extension. And then if you have a Mac, just check when you open something up next time you download it, especially if it's from somebody you don't know well. See what kind of file type it is. All right. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to tell us something that you want us to talk about here, uh, maybe you have a good idea for a trivia question or something that you are interested in learning, send us a note. Uh, it's easy. You can email us at podcasts with an S, podcasts at commando.com. For Kim and Matt, I'm Allie. Thanks for listening.